Oh boy, I am so excited about today's project. Woo! <laughs> I'm gonna wait till some more people show up. This one is gonna be so much fun. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. Sorry you're far away and I got the camera pointed all the way all the way down like this, but this is so everybody, if I need to stand, everybody can still see what I'm doing um, because I'm gonna be mixing today. So I wanna make sure I have everything set up just perfect for everybody. Hi everybody that's just joining me. Okay, today's gonna be fun. So uh, today I'm gonna be doing, um, apologize for me looking up, but I have to, for those of you just joining so that my whole table and everything can be shown. And when I stand up, um, you can still see everything. Okay, so uh, for those of you that are gonna make the project today, or if you do it later, that's fine. Today, we're doing these little paper clay pencil toppers. Super cute, right? Okay, um, so what you're gonna need, I posted everything that you're gonna need on the uh, eggs, the um, video that when it's ending, you'll be able to see all the information there, uh, the description or whatever, uh, loss of words. <laughs> um, anyway, so what you're gonna need today, you're gonna need two thirds cup of drywall joint compound or uh, mastic tile adhesive. We use this stuff um, at City Museum a lot. The tile stuff you use for the floor. Um, okay, and also you're gonna need a, uh, you know, also I think maybe you could maybe use flour. Um, I tried flour and I couldn't get the consistency the way I wanted it, but if you've played around with it, you probably could. Um, okay, so then you'll need a half a cup of, or you'll need some Elmer's glue. You'll need uh, one cup of paper, um, sorry, wait, do over. Don't listen to that. That's for a bigger, that's for a bigger, for a bigger recipe of it. So if you wanted a, a bigger recipe, you would do two thirds cup of drywall joint or tile mastic, um, tile adhesive, a uh, half cup of Elmer's glue and one cup of paper, toilet paper or newspaper, either one. But since I were making it smaller, I'm going to flip this paper over and I'm going to tell you what you need. You're going to need, uh, you're going to need the same stuff I said, um, then you're going to need um, measuring cups, you're going to need glue, you'll need toilet paper or newspaper, uh, you're also going to need tape, uh, you're going to need uh, two mixing bowls, a spoon to mix, you're going to need measuring cups, I said glue, um, I have a blender, if you had a hand mixer, or a um, smoothie maker, anything like that that you don't use, um, you can use this. You really kind of need one of these to do this project, otherwise your clay is gonna come out super lumpy. Um, and then a pencil, so you can put your topper on and mold it. And a spoon, so you can mix stuff. Uh, you want a rag, so you can wipe your hands off. And uh, you're gonna need a bowl of hot water. All right. Now, um, as I put in the description of this video, if you're a little one and you're doing this project, you're definitely going to need your adult to help you on this. Uh, while everybody is trying to get their things together, I'm going to get my bowl of hot water and I'll be right back. toppers and I'm going to teach you how to make them right now we're going to learn how to do paper clay if you don't have all the things right now the video will be um, in um, on the City Museum Facebook page or it'll also be on our citymuseum.org uh, 
page if you want to go to that and see all of the archived videos that I've done thus far. Okay, um, this is going to be uh, for, this is going to be to put your dry clay in when, if I can remember correctly, you dry clay in when you start mixing. Or your dry paper, I mean. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is, I'm going to set these things aside right now. Uh, toilet paper. I hope everybody has toilet paper. If you don't have toilet paper, you could probably use newspaper. Thing is, if you use newspaper, you're going to have to cut very small strips and kind of tear them up and stick them in the water, all right? And then you're going to have to work with it. And you'll see what I mean um, with what I'm going to be doing, all right? So um, you're going to take your toilet paper and I'm going to do, uh, because you want to have um, a half a cup of uh, paper, like um, half a cup of paper for this recipe, I'm going to say you're going to do about, if I was doing it, you'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, maybe 20 times around, all right? Um, that, and if it gives you more than that, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I know it looks like I'm wasting toilet paper, but this was an extra roll that I wasn't gonna use. It's for crafting, and so I'm good to go. Um, you're gonna take your toilet paper, all right? Now the deal is you want to um, have your hot water over your toilet paper. So if my hot water is not over my toilet paper, I'm gonna have to step away for a second and add more to it, all right? So you want it over the toilet paper, so I'm sticking this in. Stick your toilet paper. I like the toilet paper because it gives a white color. So here's some of my examples of before it's painted. This one's still kind of wet because I didn't put a hole in it, so it's taken a while to dry. But this is my example of what it looks like um, when uh, without painting it. And it does get extremely hard. When you put these over like armatures, like, see that? It's super hard. All right. Um, so poke it down in there. It seems to me that I'm going to need a little more water because it's not completely covering, so I'll be right back. I don't have a sink next to my camera, so I have to walk away every once in a while. I'm going to have to do that again in this video. Okay, next what you're going to do is you're going to take... Um, and make sure you have your table covered, by the way. Make sure you have your table covered for this because when we use that drywall joint compound, you don't want that sticking to your table, all right? Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your toilet paper and you're just gonna start tearing it apart, all right? Tear it apart. It might help that when we start to sift this out, you have a, I don't think I put this in the description, but some sort of colander or spaghetti strainer because that will help in the process of straining. Or if you have like just a regular hand strainer, you could use those too. That'll help in your process of uh, sifting this out. So I'm gonna just take all this and start tearing it apart. See how I'm tearing this apart? Hi, Miss Lori. Tear it apart. And hold on a second, because I'm gonna try to find my video on the screen so I can read comments. There we go. Okay, now I can read if anybody's talking to me. All right, so this is really fun. So just continue to tear your paper, all right? You wanna make it fibrous, you wanna make it to where um, it's not sticking together anymore. If anybody wanna know what toilet paper looks like when it goes down, goes down the hole, this is what happens, it breaks up. So you're just gonna start, keep tearing it, keep tearing little pieces, little pieces. See how it's starting to get, see how it's starting to get broken up like that? That's what you're wanting. Kind of looks like paste, right? It's not, but, and then just keep going. Keep tearing it. You want that stuff to really, really kind of soak that water up, right? All right, so then, once you kind of mix your hands in there, work it around a little bit, you'll see how it starts to really kind of thicken up, doing what it's supposed to do, really breaking up like it should be. All right, then, the next step is to drain that water out of it. Now, since I do not have a strainer here at my table, nor would I want to, you gotta do this in the sink, 
I'm gonna step away for a second and I'm gonna drain this and then I'm gonna show you what's next, all right? So I'm gonna walk away for a second. What you wanna do is you wanna hold your hand or if you have the strainer, which would be perfect, pour this into the strainer, let that water, um, most of the water get out of it. You don't want like standing water in this. I'll be right back. I have to step away so much, but it's the only way I can do it. Now you put your strainer over, um, over a bowl would be ideal so that you don't get any fibers in your sink. Right? Coming back for a second. All right, so let me show you what I did so far. What I've done is... Um, I have, well, it looks like it went through my paper, wax paper. What I've done is I have pushed on the paper when I was, um, getting the water out. Let's see how still it has like a lot of water in it. You're going to go back to your sink. You're going to squish out more. You don't want to squish it to where it's so super, super dry. You do want a little bit of, uh, moisture in it. Um, but you are going to take a lot of it out. So you're just going to squeeze that water out until kind of similar to this. See how I'm doing? Squeezing it out until now look how much just came out of that. Um, until it gets a lot more dry than what it is, but you don't want it super dry. So I'll be right back again. We're going to do this again. Just got to work with it a little bit. Squeeze, squeeze. All right, on to the next step. How exciting. Next step is, wipe this off. Move this stuff out of the way. Oh, my table's so messy, it's driving me nuts. I'm gonna take this off for a second so I can wipe this, because this, this is too much. All right, thought it got underneath my table. Um, so now that you've uh, taken the water out of your clay, let me show you something. This is how mine turned out, okay? Once I um, squeezed really hard, I got all that water out. Look, it looks like a little ball now, right? Right, so next step. Next step is to take your, um, your ball of paper. I right, sit down now for a second. Take your ball of paper and um, you're gonna start breaking it apart, okay? So just break it apart. I'm gonna zoom up a little bit here for a second. Start breaking it apart. You see that? All right, you're gonna start breaking it apart just like this. Try to get them small because you don't want it too thick because the next step is to put it into that um, food processor or um, blender to get it going. Now the hand mixer is for another section. You really, you really should have a blender or a smoothie maker or something that has those blades in it that you could stick inside so that it will um, do what it has to do. That's kind of a necessity with it. We aren't putting glue or anything in it. It's just paper. So I would say you could, if your grown up says it's okay. Oh yay! Hi Amanda from Canada. This is great. Okay, um, do you, I hope you have the list of everything that's needed. It's in the description of this video. <clears throat> and I'm just still breaking stuff up. Breaking it up. Okay, I'm gonna set some stuff aside so I can see my screens. You see that still? All right, so now that I've got it broke up, broke up, broke up, you still wanna do smaller pieces because right now my pieces look kind of like popcorn and I don't want popcorn. I want it to be smaller than that because you don't want it to get caught in your blender. You know what I mean? You don't want it to like burn your, um, burn your machine up because it's pieces of paper. So kind of just 
get as much as you can. Try not to have really super big pieces. The goal is when you put this paper in this blender is to not is to have it come out um, kind of looking like coconut. The shape of coconut, kind of. It'll be nice and fluffy when it's done, right? All right, so that's about what I got right now. It's about as good as I can get it. So this is what it looks like right now, all right? Like so. That's your toilet paper. And then um, I'm going to unzoom this, or zoom out, I should say. Unzoom, I don't... Okay, zoom out. All right, and then the next... The next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take my blender, all right, and then you're going to pour your paper into the blender. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot in there, but that's okay. I hope I have enough for my recipe. The, incidentally, if you do not have a... Um, if you do not have like a third cup of drywall joint or tile mastic compact pound, I mean, uh, or tile mastic, or if you don't have like the full, um, the amount that you need for this, it's, it's really kind of okay. As long as you have, as long as you have, um, as long as you have the three items, you can make it. And then you just play around with it until it feels right to you. You know what I mean? Um, and I'll explain what I mean by feeling right to you. So now I'm going to put this on and I'm going to turn it on. Shake it up because there's not a lot in there. You got to shake it up. Do it again. Shake it up. For mine anyway, you might have one that's better, but mine's not the greatest, but it does the job, right? And then just keep going. Keep shaking it. All right, it's getting there, getting there, getting there. Okay, see it? See how it's looking now? I'm gonna keep doing that. All right, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Looks like it was getting caught up in there, so I'm going to have to mix it up a little bit and do it again because some of it got caught up. And I think maybe because that's, it's uh, still pretty wet and I didn't take as much water out as I did on the other recipes. So I'm just going to work with this again. That explains why it's not um, doing what I wanted it to do. It's still kind of clumping up a little bit. I might have to take it and break it up again. All right. It's here. Try it again. Work with it. All right, that should be good for me. I should be good. So this is what I got. Hopefully it's gonna work okay. It looks kind of like coconut, right? Like what coconut would look like. So that's what you're gonna do. All right. And then I'm gonna put um, I'm gonna put my dry clay, my broken up clay, in the other bowl that I was telling you. I have two bowls. All right, and if it can't come out, just take your spoon and kind of work it in there. Get it out. mixture to it all right so we're gonna start with I have my notes here because I wrote all my I wrote my recipe down all right so we're gonna start with um move this stuff out way so you can see what's going on here you're gonna start with one third cup of drywall joint or tile mastic all right 
So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take my, I have tile mastic. I don't have the drywall stuff, but I'm gonna do the tile mastic, right? And then um, it says one third cup. So I'm gonna put one third cup in this, all right? I need my glasses. I didn't put my glasses on. Okay, one third cup. I hope this works. It's gonna work. One third cup. Ooh, that's quite a bit. One third cup is quite a bit, right? For this stuff. All right, so push that down in there. Need a little more. All right, that. I'm gonna set this aside. Now you might need more. Um, it depends. The thick, the the way you do this is um, it depends on the thickness and how sticky you want it. A lot of people uh, like to um, take this stuff and <clears throat> and with a knife or a putty knife uh, smooth it onto your armature. Um, and an armature is a, an armature is, is a, basically like a skeleton, okay, that you put your clay or cement or whatever on top of. And that's how Bob made, uh, the caves and a lot of the cement things that he did. He has a wire armature underneath it. Uh, you can make armatures out of just about anything though. You can do it with paper, you can do it with cardboard. It's just something that has to be a little stiff and sturdy so you can apply your stuff to it. It's the same way that you do paper mache, but we're making paper clay to paper mache clay today. So, um, okay, so now I have that. And then the next step, I'm gonna close this up. Keep your, try to keep your area clean if you can. Um, so it's just not overwhelming. This stuff kind of gets overwhelming. All right, so keep it, keep it clean if you can. Okay, um, and then next is, okay, next is the um, Elmer's glue. This says one fourth cup of Elmer's glue. Now, since I put this third cup in here, I'm gonna start putting this into my bowl because I don't wanna uh, get my measurements off. So I'm gonna put this in the bowl, right? As much as I can, get that out of there. And the next step is one fourth cup of Elmer's glue. Now you, you can shorten the recipe if you want. You don't have to have this much. Um, I'm just hoping I have enough paper clay for it because I didn't measure it um, like I thought I should have, but oh well. Okay, so um, kind of eyeballed that paper. So I, I have this little bottle here, but I also have a big bottle because um, I have a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna take mine off. Um, if you don't have this much, you can always lessen your recipe like I said. So then I said a fourth of a cup of Elmer's glue. So let's do a fourth of a cup. Elmer's or I should say Elmer's or any type of glue that is that says it's PVA. And PVA is like the stuff that you use when you make slime. Um, I believe, I want to say PVA is kind of like a silicone or something. I don't, I can't, I read somewhere once before what PVA was. But okay, so now, now I have my fourth a cup of, of glue, right? So it's got to be a fourth a cup of glue. Um, incidentally, also, if you're going out to buy this, um, this joint compound, um, there's a brand, and I, I think it's called DAP, that you shouldn't be using. And I think I probably should have said that earlier, but if you have the DAP, the brand called DAP of tile um, uh, drywall joint, it's not going to work the way it should. Um, yes, thank you, City Museum. Um, if you have the DAP brand, it's going to make your paper clay rubber when you add the glue. So just so you know, if you have that brand of drywall joint compound called DAP, it's not going to work proper. Okay, so then you're going to take your glue and you're going to pour it into your, um, I have tile mastic. So you're going to pour that into your tile mastic. All right. Looks a mess now, don't it? All right, and then the next step, if you have a blender that you can use with this, that's great. 
I don't want to use my blender with it because it's my only blender. So I'm going to use my, my spoon that I had and I'm just going to start mixing. Can you see that? So glue and my tile stuff, tile mastic, mix, 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 mix. Oh, that's a good consistency. See that? That looks really good. It's not juicy or anything. It is, but it isn't. Just keep mixing until you think it's really well mixed together. Oh, that looks great. It looks like icing. Don't eat this. Okay. It's icing for your armature. Okay. Yeah, I got that. That looks nice and smooth. Look how nice and smooth that looks. That looks perfect. All right. And once you got it nice and smooth, get this, try to get the sides clean if you can, because you want to use all this if you can. Now, if I don't have enough paper, um, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> what I should do is take my paper and just set it on the table because I'm afraid that I'm going to not have enough. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to stick it in my other bowl because um, I don't want to mess it up. So I am going to do it like this because I don't have a lot of toilet paper. I do, but... Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> Please do. Oh, yay. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Okay, so now I have this, and I'm going to put um, my paper a little bit at a time. Don't do a lot at a time. A little bit at a time into your bowl, okay? Just a little at a time because um, you want to get the right consistency. So then you're going to mix it up. Mix, mix, mix. All right, I definitely need more because look how fibrous it is. You don't want that. You want it to be kind of smooth. Now, because I didn't get a lot of the, because I didn't get a whole lot of the uh, moisture out, and I think I probably left more than I should have, my paper clay is probably going to be chunky. Um, I'll have to go, I don't think mine is going to turn out like my previous batch. That's okay. You all get the gist of it. Add more compound to it. Add more stuff to it, your mixture. And just start mixing more. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. All right, and then I'm going to add more paper because I think I got enough of that right now. For now. Now, also, um, we're going to have to make our armature too. Don't forget that. Like this. Oh, it's starting to look, starting to look good. It's still really super sticky, but look at that. I'm going to try to zoom up a little bit. Go. All right. Okay. Mix that. And I think I'm probably going to have to add more paper, and I'm almost out of paper, so I'm hoping that this turns out okay. Incidentally, if it doesn't, y'all can go back and do it again. It's okay. No bigs. Just, you could use regular newspaper, but that paper has got to be broken up. My paper looks like I didn't get the water out of it enough. So I hope that you squeezed all of your water out. Maybe I'll do some more paper. And squeeze it out. That way it might work. Well, actually, this would work. This actually might work okay. Some people like it super, um, super, super smooth. Kind of like the look of seeing the paper, you know? And I think you can also sand this stuff. Um, incidentally, anybody that's just joining, we're doing these paper clay pencil toppers. Or whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a pencil topper. It could be whatever. Just make sure you get this mixed in really good, all right? Now, you can store this in a plastic bag, and it should stay wet and moist for you. All right, now I've mixed that pretty good. This is what I got so far. See that? That's a pretty good consistency. All right, now let me wipe my hands off. Also, 
last night when I was trying out all these recipes, um, I, uh, I realized that when this stuff dries on your hands, I don't know if you remember as a kid or if you are a kid, peeling, um, peeling glue off your hands. That's exactly what happens. You peel glue off your hands. Okay, now I got that. Um, so now we have that. I'm going to set this stuff aside. I have extra of this. So you could probably put this in a container and um, close it up and keep it for another batch of um, paper clay if you wanted to do that. All right? I'm just going to push that off on the floor because I'm going to sweep that up at the end. It's just paper. All right. Next things next. And this is why I said you want to keep your area as clean as you can. So mine is not looking that clean. I'm having a problem putting things places. Is... Um, the armature. We're going to make the armature. Now I've got my ball of clay there. Now if you want it to be more clay-like and not as juicy, you could probably add less um, mastic or joint compound and that would probably work. Put that in there. Okay, so the next step is um, try to make sure your hands are uh, relatively clean because you're going to be using tape. Next step is to take a, paper, a piece of paper, like a newspaper or what have you, um, and you're going to make a little paper burrito, so to speak. All right, so you're going to wad up a piece of paper. I don't want mine very big this time. Um, I'm going to make my topper small, but this is what it what mine turned out to be. Now, you are not going to be able to paint it today. You're going to have to wait till it's dry. This one took me an entire 24 hours to dry, so you will have to wait until it dries. Um, if you make it thinner, it will probably dry a lot quicker, right? So I had a small piece there, so let's see. We're going to wad up some paper, right? This is also how I do paper mache. I will take paper mache. And when I do paper mache, you know how paper mache you can do, you can drip um, strips of paper into glue and water or flour and water. It's got to be a certain consistency. And then you drip those strips in there and let them soak for a little bit. And then you wrap it around your armature. And that's another way to do paper mache. Uh, this stuff's a little cooler because it dries a lot harder, which is super awesome. Um, but usually when I do it, I'll, I'll make a paper armature first and then I'll tape it with with um, masking tape, which is what I have right now. Okay, so now once I have my little rolled up burrito, all right, then I'm just gonna take a flat piece of paper and I'm gonna roll it up. And then, so what happens is you got this, there's this hole right there, right? Where that burrito, so to speak, is. Make sure that your this is up a little further on the paper because that's where you're going to stick your pencil in, right? Paintbrush or whatever. So there we go. So um, now you're going to tape, tape that right there, right? Take a piece of tape. I like masking. You could probably use painter's tape. Okay. So just tape it so it's closed. All right. Now that I have that, you have your opening right there. Tear that off, make that even. That's where your pencil's gonna go in, or in my case, paintbrush, right? I can fix it in there, like so, right? Kind of looks like a Q-tip. And just kind of work with it. You wanna stick it on your pencil or wherever and work with it until you get it just right, okay? I'm not happy the way this looks. I need to add more to it, so I'm gonna fix it. Uh, recap of the steps, you wanna take um, 20, uh, 20 rolls around with your hand, you know how you take your hand and you'll wrap it like this, you wanna do that 20 times. Um, actually, I would say a little more because when I did it, I didn't have enough news, I didn't have enough paper. So the, the uh, toilet paper, you would do it about, I would probably say even 30 times would be even better. So you would wrap 30 times around your hand, tear that off, put it in a container of water with your water over your toilet paper. Um, 
and then uh, let it break it up really good. Um, sift all the water out of it and then squeeze the water, uh, squeeze a lot of water out of it until almost you can't get any more, almost. Um, you don't want your, your paper super wet because if you do, it turns out really fibrous like mine is. You want it to be more silky. Um, that's the whole goal with this is to make it silky. Um, and then once you have that, it's joint compound or tile mastic. I'm using tile mastic because that's what I had here at home. Uh, and you mix that up. There is, it's, it's really a long list, but there is a um, how much you need of each thing. And I have the description on the video of, of the things you're going to need. Um, but you'll need uh, one third cup of drywall stuff, one fourth cup of Elmer's glue or PVA glue, half a cup of toilet paper or newspaper. Um, and I like toilet paper because it's white and it makes it kind of look like clay, you know. You're welcome. All right. Okay, so now that I have that, I had to redo mine because mine didn't look so much like a burrito and things were sticking up on the top. So I'm fixing it again. All right, so retaping. All right. And then I'm going to stick uh, my burrito on top of my paintbrush, which my paintbrush just broke off. So whatever. <laughs> stick it on there till you got it on. All right. Now you have it on. And then you're going to take it and you're going to squish it right here. Squish, squish. All right. And then you're going to tape tape around that. All right. And that what that's going to do now, if you have paintbrush, pencil, whatever. Tape around that, and that's going to hold it onto your pencil, right? So you can mold around it, okay? All right, so then the next step is to mold around it. So you're going to take your, okay, I'm just going to use my fingers because I don't have, I have a spatula, but my my little thing is so small that I don't want to, I don't want to use a knife. So you're just going to take it, and you're going to start Squishing it on there. And you know what? I'm going to bring this camera closer to me so everybody can see it a little better. All right. So now you're going to take this and you're going to just start brushing it onto your uh, paper and tape armature. All right. You don't want it too thick. The thicker it is, the harder it's going to be um, for it to dry. It'll take longer to dry the more you have on it. But you do want, you know, you do want a nice... A nice amount because you're trying to make that pencil topper. Now you can make paper clay with um, with flour and that would well you can make clay with flour but that replaces the paper and um, I mean I've seen I've seen tutorials where people use uh, paper and clay and um, flour but I don't so much like the flour because after a while, like, it can draw, like, uh, weevils or little bugs or mice or whatever to the flower. And so I don't really prefer it. I prefer the non-food stuff to the food stuff. Um, and plus, let's face it, everybody's trying to hoard their food. I know I know, I am. <laughs> and uh, toilet paper, too. But sorry, guys. I, I just thought this was such a cute little project that I thought the toilet paper would be great. But you could use newspaper, too, if you wanted. All right. There. Oh, this is, now it, now it looks kind of like a cotton ball, right? Or, or not a cotton ball, a uh, Q-tip. But I'm just going to push up on it because I want it to look more like a little creature. So mine's a little thicker than I wanted it, but that's okay. Now listen, when this dries, if you prefer to have another layer on it to make it look even smoother than what it looks right now. You can do that by making the paper, um, you know, ultra thin, like mine's a little thicker and lumpier than what I would pr want it to be. But um, you can use more joint compound or drywall tile stuff, uh, tile mastic and, um, and less paper and that'll make it uh, more juicy. It'll make it a little more juicy. And then you just put that on top and that makes it a little smoother than before. All right, so now I have that. 
And then you could try to form like ears if you wanted or whatever, try to make shapes with it. I didn't do enough paper in mine, so it might be a little harder for me to make the ears, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to make some ears or maybe a horn or something on top, you know. Just kind of work with it. It molds pretty okay. Just kind of push it on there. Mine seems like it's a little thick. It's probably gonna take a while to dry. All right, so I'm gonna do ears. Incidentally, when this dries and I'm all finished with it, maybe tomorrow when it's finished and I have it painted, I'll post a picture of it um, on our Facebook page here uh, in the in the comments of this video so everybody can see the finished project or product. All right, so I made ears on mine. You can even probably define like a nose or a face on it if you wanted. I think maybe I might leave mine just like this and then paint my face on to it. Just work with it. Oh, this one's going to be so cute. You can make a cat. You can make anything. Whatever you want. I'm watching the screen of this Facebook video and it looks like a super satisfying video. <laughs> All right, so now that I've done that, I'm basically finished, all right? That's basically all I can do right now. If you wanna add some more things like a tail or whatever, make sure it's nice and thick because the tail, you don't want it to break off. You could probably add it you know, around the corner or whatever. So this is what I have so far um, and then you can also you can also sand these so once it's dry you can sand it okay um and then make it even smoother than what it is so this is my little project here i'm going to set this down right there so everybody can see what i did um and then let me wipe off my hands put my example right there so everybody can see what i did All right, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, now that everybody can see me. Um, I wanna thank everybody for joining me today to make paper clay. I thought it was a lot of fun, it's paper mache clay. It was a lot of fun to do this project and um, I can't wait to do more projects with you tomorrow. Um, I hope everybody had fun. If you need any information about it, um, just there, the video will be on our Facebook page and on our citymuseum.org page. You can go to that and watch it. Um, and thanks for joining us. And I hope you all come back tomorrow at 11 o'clock to do another project.